by Motor Works. We're installing Vintage Air AC and heat kit on this 65 Mustang. As you can see, I've already got the condenser in here. Condenser upper bracket, the dryer, dryer line. So you do have to take the radiator out, the horns, hood release latch. I'll show you this kit. Now I'll show you the kit over here. This is the stuff for the compressor and condenser. Some of the lines, you can see they have to be crimped on, trimmed to fit. We got the tool to do that. Compressor mounting brackets, hard lines, binary switch, grommets, compressor mounting hardware, the compressor. This is the lower bracket, which I'll talk about in a second hood latch, compressor clutch wire, a bunch of the instructions. Now the evaporator box and everything, it goes inside. It's on the other side of the shop. We'll get to that in another part of the video. Now what I was saying about this lower bracket, if you look down in here, see there's this handmade mount and I didn't realize this until trying to put this bracket on that this was not going to work and the reason being I guess this car was damaged at some point somebody cut this portion of the rad support you can see there's some welding and kind of a mess right there but again, that was all hidden by the radiator and everything, and I didn't see it until I took it out, tried to line everything up. So I'm gonna have to make a lower bracket. What I think I'm really gonna do is just put this in my metal brake, alter these bends a little bit, trim it, mount it to these holes down here where it was supposed to go, but it was supposed to be over here, and mount to a hole that ran in towards the engine bay but again that's gone because of front end damage and kind of a botched repair job i mean it looks safe but so i'm gonna mount it down here somewhere in these holes have it bend at a 90 and then just through bolt it at the bottom there so that we don't have this ability for it to walk back and forth on the bottom Looks like the upper bracket and everything should work fine. I'll be able to get the hood latch in there. Still need to remove voltage regulator and things over here. And use the template that they provide to use a hole saw, which I'm assuming is going to be for some of the lines that come through the rad support and go over to where we'll be mounting the compressor. Now, looking at this I already know I'm gonna have to change around quite a few things to be able to fit that compressor here so hopefully that goes smoothly we'll catch back with you in the next part so you can see here how this compressor mounts now <clears throat> if this was a manual steering car this would be no problem but it has a Borgeson power steering box and a Saginaw style pump is obviously aftermarket and the mounting bolt holes on this bracket were for this bolt hole in the head and that one right behind it so what I'm thinking of doing these are solid tubes you can see if I used washers and synced it all the way down they wouldn't move but I'm just mocking this all up before I make any decisions here. What I'm thinking is these two spacers here, it's a little tough to hold the camera and do this at the same time. They were literally the same height as where this bracket starts. I've got to figure out a way to fit this bracket in here, whether it's trimming these, 
cutting this bracket and welding bracket to bracket. If I slice these in half, I could, in a sense, stick it in between and use two separate spacers, but then it's probably going to throw off the belt pattern and the way the belt runs, because you can see this one on the compressor, I'm going to have to use this back pulley to line up on the water pump. And that's where this compressor or power steering pump was running as well. So with the space that this was at, right here, I go slicing these and trying to wedge it between or ahead, my belt's not going to line up. Time to put the thinking cap on. All right, so after a little bit of brainstorming, I've come up with a possible three ideas. The one I already decided to really throw out the window because I don't like how many risks are involved. And that was to cut my spacers and trim this bracket and basically run the power steering pump off of the front groove of the compressor but as you can see I'd be relying on only the compressor to turn power steering to me there's just too many risks involved I mean that's two two points where I'd have to tighten belts and then only the only the compressor pulley would be turning that power steering pump to me too much room for issues and failure I couldn't really send it out like that and feel comfortable in doing a job that way with how involved everything else is. Now, you can see if I hold this bracket right up against that, it's still spaced out a little too far. If I go behind that compressor bracket, it pulls it in too far. So the two options I've come up with Besides that first one that I threw out the window, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this here with one hand. But basically welding this bracket to the face of this plate and doing a support bracket on each side and being able to weld that bracket to both of these existing brackets, chopping out whatever I need to here to be able to fit it. And with it holding me holding this up in place it looks like I should be able to share the belt off this back groove of the compressor which runs along the water pump and the outer groove on the crankshaft pulley. Now the other option I've got two grooves on the crank pulley down there. If I can find a three groove with a three bolt hole for a Ford small block. It's gonna bring the belt out to about here. I might be able to share this groove, a third new groove on the crank pulley, and this power steering pump. If I take different spacers and measure them properly, and basically mount this bracket in between this bracket that came with the AC kit. So I'm doing a little digging, trying to see what I can find. Um, it's either going to be that method with the triple groove crank pulley, trying to figure out spacers, or powering up that welder and making a couple support brackets and welding this plate to here, which looks like it will put this power steering pump groove directly in line. With this groove here. A lot less to replace, a little bit of fabrication work, but again, stuff like this, there's always a curveball and you have to figure it out as you go. So stay tuned, keep you updated on what I decide to do. Well, that's what I did. Chopped that power steering bracket to fit into that compressor bracket. Well, 
welded on both sides. Now you can see when I pull this tight, let's see if I can do this with one hand. Bang, right in line. Now we'll just have two adjustment points. Power steering pump here. And a compressor. Now obviously that belt's a little short, but I'm gonna have to size one up that goes under the or around the crank pulley, over the water pump, over the compressor, and over the power steering pump. It'll all be in line. So stay tuned for part two, we'll get into the hoses, installation of the stuff on the inside, uh, turned out pretty good, just got to bolt everything up now. saying I'm gonna get a longer belt I'm just gonna measure that out probably use a shoelace or a cloth tape and just wrap it around all the pulleys go around the crank over the water pump over the compressor over the power steering pump back to the crank I'll have my two adjustment points the compressor and the power steering worked out pretty well all right so if you remember from a couple clips back where I was talking about the damage to the front end and the OEM mounting point for the hood release latch isn't there any longer so that block on the right side was made by someone else to support the, the latch assembly so the bracket that came with this kit wasn't going to work because it had to be around those two bolts over there and going in towards the engine. So since that was non-existent, the bracket that they gave me was not going to work. Um, I'm still a little skeptical if it even would have worked if that point was there just because of the height of everything here i mean you can see where it's lining up with the marks that i made for the hood release latch you know i painted some witness marks on there so i can put it all right back where it needs to go so if that was any higher i really don't know about clearance especially on the back corner here Anyway, like I said, what I was going to do with that bracket was put it through my metal brake, which I did, straighten those bends out. I used the two factory holes on the top there that were already on the bracket, and then I just center punched and drilled out and used a couple big self-tappers. see how this all goes together now. So between that bracket and the bracket for the power steering pump, so far those were the curve balls that I've encountered. Like I said, the next video I'm going to show running the hoses, crimping them, and then working our way into the interior of the car, pulling the old heater core out, getting everything mounted up under the dash. So if you liked what you saw from this portion of the video, stay tuned for the next part. Thank you.